Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. It's where we are. Worship. Good morning. Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our weekly family reunion. <laughs> I'm so glad you were here. So glad you made a decision to make worshiping God a priority today. Yes, Lord, yes. And priorities. That's what we'll that's what we want to talk about today and its relationship to success. Again, you want success? Make God the priority. I'm going to share this kind of from a different perspective today. I'm, I, I, I'm assuming that most of you here know the story of the prodigal son, uh, but I'm going to share a bit of that story just in case you don't. Now, uh, the prodigal son, uh, the father in the Bible, had these two sons. One day his younger son went to his father and said, look, give me my inheritance now. I want to go live my life my way. I'm paraphrasing here. So these aren't the exact words, but this is the essence of the story. Uh, see, and, and during this time, this request was disrespectful to the utmost. He was saying, really, Father, I kind of wish you would die because I'm tired of waiting. Actually, <clears throat> the custom at that time was to split the inheritance among the uh, the, the the children, the older son would get two thirds. Uh, in this case, the younger son would get one third. The older always got more because he was expected to step up and care for the family after that. Uh, uh, the younger son was saying, give me my one third right now. I, I want to leave this place. Don't like the way you do things, Dad. Not unlike many children today. The more things change, the more they stay the same, as the saying goes. While I'm sure the father was hurt, he loved his son and respected him. And I'm sure he didn't want to see him leave. But leave he did. The son took his inheritance and left. Went out into the world, spent his money on wild living. You know, as the saying goes, wine and women's song. And whatever he was big and rich enough to do, because he had money. <clears throat> and then a famine came across the land. My God, my God. He spent all of his money, and all of his friends left with his money. So he had to mm -hmm. hire himself out to a citizen in a foreign land. Mm -hmm. His job was tending the pigs. Now, do you know what it, it means for a Jew? Pigs were considered unclean by Jews. They wouldn't even touch one. Amen. But this young man had fallen so low that he was not only tending and feeding the pigs, he began to eat what the pigs ate. A mm. Jew eating with the pigs. How low can... My, my Lord. Then the word said, he came to his senses. <laughs> and he thought, my father's hired hands do better than this. I'm going back home. I'm going to my dad and tell him, dad, I'm sorry, dad, I was wrong. I, I know I'm not worthy to be called your son anymore, but just hire me as one of your servants, one of your workers. And that'll be good enough for me. That's what I'm going to do. That's what the son said to himself. For the father's part, he looks down the road every day, hoping his young son would return. And finally, one day, he looked down that road, and lo and behold, there was his son making his way to the home. The dad stopped what he was doing, started walking slowly, and, and when he realized it was his son, he started running, grabbed him threw himself on his neck, hugged him, cried tears of joy, cried, welcome home, my son. <laughs> and 
And then the son started to say, I, I know I'm not worthy, but 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 before he could finish, the dad said, someone bring him a robe, bring him a ring, bring him some royal shoes uh, to put on his feet. <clears throat> Stop what you're doing. Kill the fatted calf. <clears throat> Prepare, for we are going to have a feast, a celebration. For my son who was lost has come home. He has been found. My son who was dead has come to life again. Yes. Oh, the joy, the celebration, <laughs> the success. So the young son had hit rock bottom. He got up and did the right thing. He made a decision to go home and make things right with his father. Yes. This became his priority, and he did it. And he was lifted to a place of royalty again in his father's house, from pigs and poverty to restoration and royalty. You Amen. want success? You want success? Make serving God the priority. Not an afterthought, the primary thought, and then act. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pray with me, please. <clears throat> Father, we sing the song, we love you because you first loved us. And you did. And you had the patience with us until we realized that that's true. We understand that now that since our eyes are open, that you want us to make you first in our lives. You want us to make you not a priority, but the, the priority, number one. For you indeed are the only one who deserves to be called number one. For you are, in fact, first in all things. Father, as we are reminded of this in our message today, help us to take this message to heart and live so that others might see and you might be proud of us, your children. This is our prayer. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. I'm just going to remind you today that if you would be great, serve God. Make it the priority. If you would be successful, serve God. You've tried everything else and that's failed. Now try God. For he has been patiently waiting for you to come home. Yes. Or to, or to come back home if you've been away. Mm -hmm. Give God a try. Surrender to him. You'll be so glad you did. Young people, I'm especially talking to you. I'm not telling you to stop living. I, I'm not telling you to stop having fun, but include God in your life. Yes, amen. In this order, God, family, study, career, God first. Never praise him second to anything or anyone. Amen. As we review this uh, our, our message today, we're going to look in Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, where Jonah finally ful fulfills his mission. Finally, as I said. We're going to look in Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Here, Jesus preaches in Galilee and calls his first four disciples. In 1 Corinthians Chapter 7, verse 29 through 31, Paul reminds the Corinthians to beware of putting too much of their time and effort into worldly affairs, but be about the business of God, for this world is passing away. Amen. Psalm, Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12, the psalmist warns, do not put your trust in man in riches, but look to God for all our needs as he is our refuge and our strength and our salvation. <clears throat> so let's mm -hmm. go to Amen. John. Let's look at Jonah chapter 3 verse 1 through 5. Now here's where Jonah uh, finally uh, fulfills his mission by going to Nineveh. And, and the word said and the word came the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. I emphasize second time for many of us know what happened the first time. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh <clears throat> because they were wicked, evil people, none god fearing So Jonah was basically saying to God, look, I, I don't want to tell them about you. you you're too good. You might forgive them. 
<laughs> Let them perish, in other words. I hate them. So Jonah went in the opposite direction, got on a boat and headed out to sea. Now, <laughs> the sea uh, roared so badly that the men on the ship asked everyone to call on your God to save us. <clears throat> Jonah was asleep. They woke him up and said, call on your God, man. We're about to die here. Then Jonah came clean. He told them. He, he said that his God had told him to go to Nineveh, but he decided to go and board the boat and go otherwise. He leveled with them. He said, the only way to calm this storm is to throw me overboard. They didn't want to do this. They, they didn't know this God that John was talking about, but they, don't, they, they were decent people. Uh, so they began throwing their cargo overboard. What happened? The storm got worse. Finally, you know, they prayed to their gods and asked, asked for forgiveness. Then they threw John overboard and the sea went completely calm. As the saying goes, look at God. Amen. Maybe you've got some storms in your life right now. Mm -hmm. Are you giving God the time he deserves? So they threw Jonah overboard and God caused the stormy sea to peace. Be still. <clears throat> but God wasn't through with Jonah yet. Jonah should have been dead, should have been drowned, should have drowned. But God sent a big fish to swallow Jonah. And for three days, Jonah was in the belly of the whale. I'm sure many of you have heard the story. For all intent and purposes, Jonah was dead. This was a precursor of things to come. Jesus would refer to this during his time on earth. Jesus would be in the grave three days and then would rise. But for Jonah, on the third day, the whale got sick at the stomach and threw him up. Mm. So in a sense, he rose from the grave as well. I imagine he was a stinking mess. <clears throat> Anyway, after he got himself together, after having suffered this consequence, he headed for Nineveh, as he should have done in the first place. Yes. Some of us have to get spanked sometimes before we do the right thing. That's so much like us Christians, some of us, and so much like children. So now we as parents have the best interest at heart, but they can't always see it. Don't want to listen sometimes. But then life happens. And they realize mom, right, dad was right. And they come back home and say, mom, dad, uh, I need your help. I'm sorry, I, I, I was wrong. <clears throat> well, they verbalize that and not the action so They realize that we were a little tough on them because we wanted the best for them. And it took getting swallowed up in the belly of the whale of life for them to see. As foster parents, many tried to come back to us who went through this, through our, our, our home, because well, we were a little tough. I think my wife was a little tougher than me. But then, that, nevertheless, we were doing what was best for them. And many of them who left called and wanted to come back. But very few did. As we were in foster care, and we had, we had a full house most of the time. But, but it took them being spewed up from the razzle-dazzle, filth of the world, uh, the world's way of doing things, <clears throat> for them to, for their eyes to be open, much like the prodigal son. But thank God they finally do see some of them. Others never do. Have mercy, Lord. And so Jonah did what he should have done in the beginning, listen to God, obeyed God. <clears throat> he was he has the best plans for you, and he knows what's best for you. After all, he is God, the creator. He wrote the instruction manual. He knows us. That instruction, instruction manual, by the way, is the Bible. And after all, your parents who have your best interest at heart know what's best for you early on. For as a child, you do not know what's best for you. You have not lived long enough yet. That's why God gives you parents. They may not have all the 
kinds of degrees or training, but they love you and, and they've lived enough. They made enough mistakes on their own to point you in a better direction to help ease your road. And notice I said ease, not eliminate. For if you live this life, you are going to experience some stormy seas. But thank God, as the old song says, but he will carry you through. Thank God, have mercy. <laughs> the Lord will carry you through. So let this be a lesson to you. Conform your way of life to God's way, and you shall do well. <clears throat> Perhaps, uh, like Jonah, he will give you a second chance to get it right. Some do not always get the second chance. Get too far out there to turn around. We had a young girl to come to Holly Park. She had been out in the street. She joined the church that day. But then on that next couple of days, she went back to her old ways. They found her a week later murdered down in Orange County. She didn't have the chance to come back. But thank God she gave her life before they took her life. But that's our merciful God. He gives us chance after chance to get it right. <clears throat> and so God told Jonah a second time. He said, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed. And the word of the Lord, uh, he obeyed the, the word of the Lord and went forth to Nineveh. Uh, now, Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be destroyed, will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. They heeded Jonah's message. A fast was proclaimed and all of them, from the greatest, from the king to the least, put on sackcloth. Oh, how America needs so much to do this right now. That is to repent and turn back to God. And that's going to solve the majority of our problems right here. <clears throat> what does he say? Uh, he, 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 says, he says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. That's in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Come back to God, America. I implore you. Come back to God, family. I implore you. See, it begins with us, God's people. We are the pace setters. Now, now look at what happens when Jonah preached. Verse 10 says, when God saw what they, the Ninevites, did and how they turned from their evil ways, God relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. God's grace and mercy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He was going to destroy them, but after John the preach, it says he relented. God relented and did not bring on them the destruction that he had threatened. See, God's word is for everyone. <clears throat> Despite the wickedness of the Ninevites people, they were open to God's message and repented immediately. Mm -hmm. If we simply proclaim what we know about God, we may be surprised at how many people will listen. <clears throat> Jonah, Jonah was extremely successful, and he, he was a reluctant prophet. He didn't want to do it. <clears throat> See, but he did it anyway. He did what God said. And God's word is true. It's going to go out. And it will, will not come back for it. Amen. See, some truth-telling, some truth-telling preacher needs to tell the truth to those, to these mega Republicans of the day. <laughs> so they can open their eyes. Some of those evangelicals who are upholding Mr. Trump ought to be saying to him, Donald, what you are doing is not right. They need to be saying, Donnie, what you're doing is evil. Donnie, what you are doing is causing injury and even death to God's people. Donnie, it's time to turn around, time to repent. And Donnie, if you don't stop it, you should never have our vote. 
This is what they need to be telling Donald since they love him so much. <clears throat> but they are scared. They are more scared of Donald than they are of God. My Lord. This shall result in terrible consequences for them, as we have seen. <clears throat> Nevertheless, I want you to pray for Mr. Trump. Pray yes, for the most yes. MAGA Republicans. Yes. That they repent. Truly turn to God, as they used to say to everyone else. But still, I want you to work and get involved and vote your, your, the right way. <clears throat> uh, but uh, see, and even they too can be saved. They too can be successful when they really make God and not Donald Trump and money and power their priority. Amen. They too can be saved. They can turn around. They can repent. Oh, I know it's not easy. I, I know some of you don't want to do it. I have trouble even saying it sometimes. <clears throat> but if we say we are Christian, we must do it. For this is God's way. His will, not ours. <clears throat> oh, yes. His ways are much higher than our ways, God's way. No, we don't always understand what he wants. But we must trust and obey. Period. We must trust and obey. Amen. Mm -hmm. In Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 10, we see Jesus preaching in Galilee. Verse 14 says, after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. He said, the time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net in the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you out to fish for people. Some say I'll make you fishers of men in some versions. <clears throat> At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a bit farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father in the boat with the hired men and followed Jesus. These ordinary fishermen were wise. For they made following Christ not a priority, but the priority. There's a difference. Yes, they amen. They dropped everything else and followed Jesus. This is the kind of commitment that God wants from us today. And if we are wise, we will make time for him in our lives. Uh, this is the kind of commitment that, that makes for success the kind of commitment that's necessary for success. So when it comes to time, no one has the time, but we make time for what we desire. So I yes. say, desire him, for he is everything. He has everything. Yes. And he wants to give you everything, including Amen. abundant life now and abundant life eternally. My brothers and sisters, that is real success. Hallelujah. <clears throat> In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29 through 31, we read Paul talking to the Corinthians. He says, what I mean, brothers and sisters, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they do not. Those who mourn as if they did not. Those who are happy as if they were not. Those who buy as if they did not. Those who are happy as if they were not. Those who buy something as if it were not theirs to keep. So he goes on and on. And he says, for this world in its present form is passing away. Hear this. Hear this. This is still true. This world in its present form is passing away. <clears throat> Make Working for God, the priority in your life, the priority in your life, for only what you do for Christ will last. That's not just a song. This is true. This is God's word. <clears throat> you want to be really successful? I recommend to you Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added as well. 
along with Psalm 37, 4, delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. What is your heart desire? Delight in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your hearts right in his word. Psalm 37, 4, look it up. Don't just trust Pastor Larry. Try him and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. That's in Psalm 34, 8. In Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12, we read, Yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Trust in him at all times. Surely the lowborn are but a breath. The highborn are but a lie. <clears throat> if weighed in a balance, they are nothing. Together, they are only a breath. Do not trust in riches. Though they may increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard, power belongs to God. And with you, Lord, is unfailing love. You reward everyone according to what they have done. That's God's word. You reward everyone according to what they have done. David expresses his feelings to God and then reaffirms his faith. Trust in God to be our rock, salvation, and fortress will change our entire outlook on life. No longer must we be held captive by resentment toward others, even when they hurt us, even the Trump type people, uh, even those MAGA Republicans. When we are resting in God's strength, nothing can shake us. <clears throat> It is tempting to use honor, power, wealth, or prestige to measure people. We may even think that such people are really getting ahead in life. But on God's scale, these people are just a breath, a puff of air, if you will. What then can tilt the scales when God weighs us? <laughs> and here it is. <clears throat> Not trusting God, uh, trusting God and working for him. See, wealth, honor, power, or prestige add nothing to our value in God's eyes. But the, here's what it does. Faithful work we do for him has eternal value. Amen. What is that? Yes, Lord. Praying, Bible study, serving the underprivileged, helping others, doing good doers of the word, as James says, not hearers only. Serving God in the See, these stories in the Bible are here for our benefit. We don't have to find the hard way like the prodigal son or Jonah that disobedience to God has consequences. I am telling you today that if you want real lasting success, do like the fishermen, those first disciples who dropped everything immediately and followed Christ. They made God the the priority in their lives. And I say to you, make God the priority in your life if you would be successful. This is the Amen. word of God for the people of God. Let the church say, Amen. <clears throat> Let the church Amen. Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. Welcome to the new Earth Christian.